Regardless, if you love or hate Hillary Clinton, you simply just can't deny the fact that she's corrupted by big money. When she was Secretary of State, she gave special access to and approved weapons deals for Clinton Foundation donors, and she presumably set up a private email server to hide this corruption from the public, and people on the left and right have spoken out against this type of behavior, and that includes Donald Trump. And in fact, during his campaign, he promised that he would appoint a special prosecutor to investigate investigate Hillary Clinton and potentially jail her for this corruption. But all of a sudden, now that he's president-elect, he's having a little bit of a change of heart. Take a look. Hillary Clinton may be the most corrupt person ever to seek the presidency of the United States. She is a crooked one. There's no question. Hillary Clinton will be under investigation for a long, long time for her many crimes against our nation, our people, our democracy, likely concluding in a criminal trial. I think when the president-elect, who's also the head of your party now, Joe, tells you before he's even inaugurated, he doesn't wish to pursue these charges, it sends a very strong message, tone and content to the members. And I think Hillary Clinton still has to face the fact that a majority of Americans don't find her to be honest or trustworthy. But if Donald Trump can help her heal, then perhaps that's a good thing. Um, I do. Look, I think he's thinking of many different things as he prepares to become the president of the United States. And things that sound like the campaign aren't among them. Now, he also claims that the Clintons have, quote, been through enough. And quite frankly, even though she should have been indicted by the Department of Justice, I've been consistent in maintaining that I don't know whether or not it's a jailable offense. Most likely, if she were to be found guilty in the court of law, she'd simply just be fined at most. But I mean, nonetheless, many of Donald Trump supporters are now outraged saying, what the hell? You said that you were going to do this. You said you were going to prosecute her corruption. What's going on? And look, I found myself in a similar position to you guys eight years ago when President-elect Obama took office, and he chose not to prosecute the war crimes of George W. Bush and Dick Cheney. Now, the question is, why would he not prosecute blatant acts of war crimes? Well, the answer was simple. It was because Obama wanted to commit war crimes himself because he's done things that I think are tantamount uh, to violations of international law. For example, you can look at the drone program that he ramped up right after Bush took office and the extent to which civilians are killed by this program. It's just terrifying. So Obama, however, didn't want to prosecute George Bush for this because he didn't want to be subject to the same prosecution. And if you kind of fill in the dots there and you look at Donald Trump and question why wouldn't he want to prosecute Hillary Clinton for corruption? Well, it's simple. It's because he wants to be corrupt himself. And in fact, just being president-elect now for about three weeks has shown that he wants to do nothing more than enrich himself as president of the United States. And there are various examples for this. So Salon explains, reports continue to pile up about president-elect Donald Trump using his political power to promote his business interests. Argentine newspaper La Nación reported that when President Mariko Macri called Trump to congratulate him on winning the presidency, Trump asked Macri to facilitate the construction of an office building that he has for several years had his eye on building. According to TPM, complications involving permitting requirements, financing, and importing building materials had been holding it up, and Trump apparently believed that Macri could help him work them out. Additionally, leaked news of a meeting between President-elect Donald Trump and a trio of Indian real estate executives has ethics watchdogs worried about the incoming administration. According to a report from the New York Times on Saturday, Trump met with Sagar Chordia, Atul Chordia, and Kalpesh Mehta on Tuesday in Trump Tower. The three men have said in the past that they wish to expand their business relationship with the Trump organization now that Trump has been elected to run the country. Sagura Chordia confirmed by text message with the New York Times the accuracy of an Indian newspaper report saying the meeting had indeed been about expanding deals with Trump's businesses. Now, anticipating the criticism that I'll receive for this argument from Trump supporters, they'll say, well, Mike, 
The problem is that Hillary Clinton was taking money from really egregious regimes like Saudi Arabia, where they kill gays uh, and, and they subordinate women to second-class citizens. And Donald Trump actually asked this of Hillary Clinton during a debate. Why don't you give back the money? I think it would be a great gesture. And he's right there. It's a legitimate question. So by him posing that question to Hillary Clinton, why she would accept money from Saudi Arabia, why won't you give it back? Well, he's not going to do the same thing, right? And try to profit off of Saudi Arabia? Well, The Hill explains, President-elect Donald Trump registered eight companies during his presidential campaign that appeared to be tied to hotel interests in Saudi Arabia, according to a report in the Washington Post. Trump registered the companies in August 2015, shortly after launching his presidential bid, according to the Post. Now, according to Raw Story, foreign leaders that travel to the U.S. will be helping to enrich Trump as well. So after a Washington Post report detailed that foreign diplomats now feel pressure to stay at the president-elect's hotel in D.C., one Asian diplomat said, Why wouldn't I stay at his hotel? Blocks from the White House so I can tell the new president I love your new hotel. Isn't it rude to come to his city? and say, I am staying at your competitor? On Monday morning, a law professor at George Washington University, Stephen Schooner, appeared on MSNBC and questioned Trump running the country while maintaining his business at the same time. Because Trump does business in various countries, Schooner said that the new president-elect could have an impeachment issue because you have foreign states basically paying money to the Trump organization by using their hotels. And there's a name for all of this. It's called corruption because obviously his business creates a gigantic conflict of interest. Now here's what Trump said about this. So according to the New York Times, pressed to respond to criticism in other areas, he was defiant. He declared that the law's totally on my side when it comes to questions about conflict of interest and ethics laws. The president can't have a conflict of interest, he said. He said it would be extremely difficult to sell off his businesses because they are real estate holdings. He said that he would like to do something and create some kind of arrangement to separate his businesses from his work in government. He noted that he had turned over the management of his businesses to his children, which ethics lawyers say is not sufficient to prevent conflicts of interest. No shit. He insisted that he could still invite business partners into the White House for grip and grin photographs. He said that critics were pressuring him to go beyond what he was willing to do, including distancing himself from his children while they run his business. If it were up to some people, he said, I would never even see my daughter Ivanka again. Mr. Trump did not dispute reports that he had used a meeting last week with Nigel Farage, the UK Independence Party leader, to raise his opposition to offshore wind farms. Mr. Trump has long complained that wind farms would mar the view from his golf course in Aberdeenshire, Scotland. I might have brought it up, Trump said, then argued he had done so because of policy concerns about wind farms rather than any personal interest. Now, he also states, in theory, I could run my business perfectly and then run the country perfectly. Yeah, and Donald Trump claims that I think the Trump brand is hotter than it's ever been. So it's clear that being president will make Donald Trump the richest that he's ever been. And it's very evident that he pursued that office just to enrich himself. Is anyone surprised by this? So look, if you're wondering why Donald Trump doesn't want to prosecute Hillary Clinton for corruption, it's because he's going to get an office and do the same exact thing, but perhaps worse. Bigly.